Hello Vlogosphere, my name is the Bluebird. Welcome back to my channel and I have an announcement to make. Wait for it. Alright. Grab my phone. But seriously, I am coming out as gay. And that's a big deal for me because I never made an like official coming out as gay to like my friends or to my extended family for a lot of reasons. And just to clarify, those of you who know me in real life, my friends from school, this might come as not as a shock, but confusing, because about a year ago I came out as bisexual. And I know bisexuality gets a bad rep for its reputation as like a stepping stone to coming out as gay, which is false. If you're bisexual, or pansexual, or asexual, you are valid. Your sexuality is valid. But for me, I always, I kind of thought I was bisexual because I sort of, forgive me if this is TMI, but fantasies of kissing girls and doing other stuff with girls, but after a lot of soul searching, I realized I can never like fall in love with a girl or marry a girl. So let me, and also sexuality is a spectrum. I assume you've heard of the Kinsey scale, but, and I lead mostly to men. So yeah, this is like, so yeah, sorry ladies, I like men. I think you're all beautiful though. So anyways, I never like officially came out as gay to everyone I know for a lot of reasons. Growing up, being gay was something forbidden, so to speak. It was something that you weren't allowed to talk about, especially not to kids. The first time I ever heard that word was in fifth grade, my teacher had us watch West Side Story, awesome movie by the way, and during the song I Feel Pretty, when Maria sings, I feel pretty and witty and gay, the entire class bursted out laughing. And my teacher was like, gay can mean happy too. And I was like, what else does it mean? So for the next few days, my the other kids were saying, hey Miles, are you gay? Gay means happy. And I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, I'm relatively happy, so to speak. So I finally asked my teacher, what does gay mean? And she said, men who like men and women who like women. And to all you right-wing conservatives out there, no, my brain didn't explode. I wasn't corrupted by the homosexual perversion. I was just like, oh. Okay. And like, I was thinking about like, I like guys. I spent years like wanting boyfriends, so I must be gay. But then I heard of the Westboro Baptist Church. I saw a special on TV. You might know them as the famous church who has signs that say, God hates fags, or fags die, God laughs. They can usually be seen at the funerals of soldiers, or they try to protest the funerals of the Newtown children. So yeah, they're not good people. And that was terrifying to me. That was heartbreaking. I grew up Christian, not just Christian, Baptist. So the idea that God hates you and will send you to hell for something you can't control or choose, and that the only way you can ever get salvation is to never, like, fall in love with anyone. That's terrifying, and it's heartbreaking. I carried around this shame and guilt for years. I tried to force myself to like girls, to just not be gay. I was like, because I was afraid that God wouldn't love me, or that my family wouldn't love me, and that my friends wouldn't like me anymore. That's terrifying to a child. So after years and through a bunch of therapists and talking to other queer people and having lots of crushes on boys, 
my camera is crooked. Okay, that's better. I finally was able to be comfortable with it, but I never told anyone because the mentality was, well, that's my business, that's my private life, I'll just let it be that, and I won't really tell anyone. But I remember something Ellen DeGeneres said in her coming out interview on Oprah. Oprah asked her, why was it necessary for you to come out? Why was it necessary for the character on your sitcom to come out? And she said, because it's okay, like, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Straight people can be, are privileged because they can be open about their sexualities and their love life. And no one bats an eye. And when you're gay, there's this constant fear that people will judge you or say mean things about you or do horrible things to you. So, and hiding who you are is just exhausting. So, I officially... Well, I came out to my mom. She was the first person I told, other than a few therapists, on June 26th, 2015, which is my birthday. And on that day in 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that same-sex marriage was legal in all 50 states. I was ecstatic. I was so happy. Like, best birthday gift ever. I mean, I wanted a car, but... You know, the ability to get married and have my marriage recognized in all 50 states was... It was just amazing. An amazing feeling. So I thought it was a sign that I should come out to my mom. I was nervous. I was shaking. I sat her down at the table after I ate my birthday cupcake and I was like, Mom, I'm gay. And the first words out of her mouth were, not even a second later, was... No, you're not. It was a whole bunch of back and forth, a bunch of stuff like, you can't be gay, you don't socialize enough, you never had a boyfriend, you never shown interest in anyone, you, you're too young to know. And she even said, you're not a sexual being. Okay, two things on that. One, to be human is to be a sexual being, unless you're asexual, which again is completely valid. And being gay doesn't, gay gets a lot of stigma because it's something taboo, it's something inherently sexual. It's not, being gay isn't just about who you have sex with, it's about who you fall in love with. So, and it's just a part of you. So yeah, long story short, it was a bunch of back and forth. She was in denial and I cried. I just remember at the end of all of it, sobbing. Like, it was not a pleasant experience. And she also told me, Miles, you don't need to announce you're gay to everyone. Just don't tell anyone else. I even asked her not to tell any of my other family members because I wasn't ready to come out to them yet. And she, she promised that she wouldn't. And then, then she proceeded to tell them, her entire side of the family. So, thanks a lot, Mom. And all of their reactions were, Miles, you don't need to, like, announce you're gay to everyone. Someone said, Miles, why do you think you're gay? So, all sorts of, like, infantilizing and denial and judgment. I'm pretty sure, and it sucks. It really sucks being outed, especially by your trusted family members. Because I, I get to decide who I tell and how I tell them, not you. That is my right. I just realized that everyone on my mother's side and some of her friends know I'm gay, but my dad doesn't know. So dad, if you're watching this, hey! I'm gay. Anyways, so over the years I just was like keeping it private, keeping it my business. But then slowly but surely as I began to form a friend group in college and be close to them, I was able to like be open. And there were other openly LGBT students at my school, at every school I've been to. like. 
And a couple of people I told knew I was gay. Like, I told my next door neighbor and he was like, oh, I always knew. So it was my assumption that everyone knew. But then, a year ago, I was like, we were talking to my friend group in college about our celebrity crushes, and I said Evan Peters. I still like Evan Peters, by the way. Sort of. For those of you who don't know, he was in X-Men and American Horror Story, and one of my friends was like, Miles, art thou a homosexual? His words, not mine. And I was like, again, I came out as bisexual, but at the time, I, that's why I identified myself as. And his reaction was, why didn't you tell me? Like, oh my gosh, like, I felt like it was good to be open about it and be honest about who I am because I don't want to be ashamed of who I am. I don't want to hide this part of me. So a lot of things in my life helped me find a sense of pride in being gay. Firstly, the TV show Glee. I was, which, fun fact, first aired t over ten, 10 years ago. The first episode aired 10 years ago today. Glee was a big part of my childhood. I love it with all my heart. Gleeks forever. Like, but I digress. So one of the first episodes of Glee I ever watched all the way through was Never Been Kissed. And the thing about Glee is it has, it was one of the modern day shows that normalized LGBT characters, especially teenagers. But the character that struck a chord with me personally wasn't Kurt, it wasn't Blaine, it wasn't Santana or Brittany. Although I love all of them and I love the actors who play them. If you're watching this, hi, love you. Love everything you do. But it was, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. David Karofsky, who was the archetypal high school jock bully, who bullied the glee club and bullied the gay kids for just being gay. But in the episode Never Be Kissed, he kissed another gay character. So I was like, whoa. And... That started one of the most complex and emotional story arcs on a TV show I have ever seen in my life. That was the first time I had ever seen two men kissing on live national TV. And later in the episode, he was like, oh, is this your boyfriend, Kurt? I know he's saying that in like a mocking way, but like... The, I, for me, at that time, it was unfathomable, or beyond belief to me that two men can even be in a relationship. That was a concept that was foreign to me. And to see that possibility acknowledged was kind of touching. Anyways, the character of Dave Karofsky, played by the phenomenal, underappreciated Max Adler. If you're watching this, hey! That struck a chord with me, because not every gay is the lisping, stere flamboyant stereotype. When you're struggling with your identity, there's a lot of shame, sadness, and anger. And you can see all of that resonated in this character. You can see how badly he puts up walls, and how hard he fights to hide who he is from anyone. And you can see the fear of him coming out. I don't want to go into too many details about the storyline. You have to see it for yourself. But it culminates with his character being outed at his school and attempting suicide. Which, needless to say, has a real life precedent. LGBT... A few years ago, and still today, there was an epidemic of gay teens committing suicide. Because they were bullied so badly for just being who they are. And that is still true today. It's what started the It Gets Better project and the Trevor project. So, it was just an attempt and the character did survive. But still, that entire storyline just struck a chord with me. It showed me that you're not alone and that there are people who have the same feelings as you do. 
and that eventually, slowly but surely, you can be able to accept yourself. And the character doesn't, of Dave Croft, he doesn't stay a bully forever. He eventually, he has a redemption arc and a humanized arc. So anyways, that helped me a lot in accepting myself. Another thing that helped me was Ellen DeGeneres, who I feel like I don't have to explain this to all of you, but to those of you who don't know, she had a sitcom back in the 90s called, well, Ellen, and her character came out as gay at the same time that she did. And it was like a huge deal. Like, some people were happy and cheering her on, but there were also people who were like, hated her and want and sent her death threats and wanted her show cancelled. The thing is, in that time period, this was like a big scandal and it threatened to like destroy her career. She put everything she had been working for on the line and her show did get cancelled as a result. But eventually, somehow she came out the other side stronger. She has a talk show that is the most well-known talk shows on TV. She's been in movies and TV. She's one of the most successful and powerful people in Hollywood. And she has a happy life with her wife, Portia de Rossi. So things did work out for her. And I don't, I can honestly say that the whole LGBTQ rights movement we wouldn't be where we are today without Ellen DeGeneres. So Ellen, I thank you. And on a more personal note, those are celebrities. Who have, have I actually known who, in real life who inspired me? And I do. I do have some people I want to thank. When I was in high school, there were these two English teachers. They were both women and they were married to each other. And it was well known in the student body that they were married and have, they have two beautiful children. I remember one day one of them was saying, oh, I went to a timeshare thing and Mrs. So-and-so, I'm not at liberty to give out their names, I respect their privacy. Oh, and she said, don't, honey, don't bring your checkbook, we are not buying anything. And I was like, why is she like all up in your business. It took me like, forgive me, like it took me longer than I should have to realize that they were together. And another time we had class outside and one of my classmates made the teacher her a flower crown and then when we got inside she was like, what did you do with the flower crown? And the teacher was like, oh I gave it to my hippie wife. Like, and another time she said, oh, she's not my girlfriend, she's my wife. And that made me so happy. Growing up, I heard lots of stories of teachers being fired for being gay or having to hide who they are to keep their jobs. And the fact that these two women were able to like be open about their life and their family without fear of persecution gave me a lot of hope. It, I mean, granted, we live in a relatively progressive and diverse part of the U.S. I feel like the situation would have been different if we were in, like, the Deep South, but, like, still, it gave me a lot of hope. And that was the first time I'd ever seen, like, a real-life family with two moms. They were married, they had kids, and they were, like, so happy together. And that gave me hope that one day I could have a family with a husband and kids of my own and not be looked at as something strange or taboo. So if you two are watching this, or, or if Ellen DeGeneres is watching this, or Max Adler, or Ryan Murphy, the creator of Lee, is watching this, all of you gave me a sense of pride in being who I am, and I thank you for that. But... It wasn't just those people, it was the entire LGBTQ community. The whole history of us from the beginning of time. People who have fought and risked their lives to be recognized by the government as equal citizens. Which brings me to my next point. Recently, 
the House of Representatives passed the Equality Act. And basically what that is, is an act that would officially, officially protect people against discrimination in jobs, in housing, or in public, in public businesses from being discriminated against on the basis of their sexual orientation and their gender identity. It was passed by the House, but it is now in the Senate. I urge all of you to call your senators. You can do that. I'll put a link to the number you can dial in the description. We need this. There are still people who are fired for their jobs or lose their homes or their lives for being LGBTQ+. And we need this. It's literally the, the desire to be protected from discrimination and persecution is literally what we've been fighting for the whole time. So please, please call your senators, urge them to pass this, and a final note, if you are LG, if you are watching this and you're a little kid and you're gay or bi or trans or non-binary and you feel alone and you feel like no one will love you or accept you, I just want you to know that things may be hard now. You've made have an unsupportive family, or you may be bullied, or you may be a victim of systemic prejudice, but it does get better. Someday in the future, you will find people who will love and accept you for who you really are inside. And the thing about the LGBT community is that we create our own families. We choose our families. We choose people who will be with us no matter what, and who don't want us to change, and who want us to be truly happy. So, yeah. Thank you all for watching this video. And I would like to close by saying, one of the things my mom told me was, Miles, you don't have to worry about being gay, just be Miles. Well, the thing is, you're right. I am Miles, and I am gay. I'm gay, and I'm proud. And side note, I really want to be in this year's Proud to Be video on YouTube. I really do. I really want to be in the Proud to Be video. <laughs> that sounds like completely shallow, but yeah. So, happy Pride. Stay strong. Thanks for watching. Like, rate, comment, subscribe. And have a blessed day.